Now we're going to get some insights into what it takes to put on an event of this magnitude. I first want to talk about, you know, I came here quite a few years ago, I guess now, 2013. The room was much smaller. The event was considerably smaller. So it seems like things have really exploded here in, in Asia and in Macau more specifically. So talk to me a little bit about the evolution of this room in the Hard Rock and Poker Stars Live Macau. Sure. Uh, first of all, welcome back. Uh, nice to have you. Um, as you say, it's uh, been quite a significant growth over the last couple of years and my team have been working really hard to, to build this room and uh, uh, tap into some of the local markets out here and uh, Macau is a good uh, venue and a good destination and uh, very accessible to, to a lot of the local markets and it's, uh, it's seen us grow into what you see today. Well, especially with everything that's gone down in Australia in the, in the recent news, I think in addition to all of the all, already expectations in Asia, now it's probably even more so. Tell me about what you, you see as the future of this market. Well, Asia as a market is uh, one of the, the last frontiers for poker. It's uh, still a very young emerging market and there's so much potential out here. And I think uh, people are starting to see that now. And you know, events like uh, the one we're hosting at the moment gives uh, a lot of the international poker players uh, a bit of an insight into to what is going on out here. And, and for some of them, it's, it's been quite a surprise. You know, I can see, especially for a lot of these regulars, it's there's a lot of non-regular poker players here, just a lot of people who enjoy poker, and I think it clearly brings the regs because it's a great mix. And 1.7 billion people, no big deal. It's, it's, an, it's a solid, solid player pool to choose from. Now, I wanted to talk to you about some of the things, you know, that people don't realize that go on behind the scenes. You know, there's this shiny, beautiful product that everyone gets to see, but there's so much that goes into putting on an event like this. So can you talk to us a little bit about some of the you know, hurdles, whether they're legal or logistical, that it takes to get something like this together? Sure. Uh, I'll start off by saying, from a player's perspective, coming here and seeing a, a seamless event is what we want. And we, we try to make it look easy. And if, if it looks easy, we've done our job well. But, but clearly, an event this size, it, a lot goes into it. And we start that process several months in advance. Uh, with uh, the PokerStars Championship Macau uh, hosting this event for the first time, we wanted to really make sure it was a, a showcase for the international participants that were coming. And uh, City of Dreams in Macau were kind enough to give us the whole level two of uh, the City of Dreams here to, to run the tournament. Yeah. And, and from that, our goal was to, to fill this room. And um, you know, to do that took a lot of work. We've got a spread of 90 tables here. and. Uh, um, to put some perspective on, on the staffing side of things, um, 12 months ago we had 40 dealers we, on, on our books here and today we have over 100 and uh, the, the process of, of getting to that isn't as straightforward as it may be in, in some of our other stops. Um, Macau's a little unique in terms of we have to hire local dealers, it's a, it's a government uh, regulation expectation on us and uh, uh, in terms of supporting the local market and it's uh, something we happily do but it, it does uh, give us some challenges as well in terms of having to recruit and train that many dealers from, from a local pool. Uh, as I said earlier, it's a, an emerging market here, so there isn't a uh, strong uh, pool of dealers to tap into, or poker dealers at least. Uh, so it's, uh, it's quite a challenge. And, and that process started uh, uh, almost 12 months ago now with uh, our, um, um, our senior manager for, uh, for uh, poker, uh, starting the process with his team in, in recruiting and, and training. And each of the dealers here today have received minimum 100 hours of, uh, of training before they were uh, allowed to even sit in front of one of our customers. And that is part of our commitment to, to making sure that when we, we host these events that we, uh, we deliver to the standard that the people expect. And, and you know, we understand people are traveling a long way and, and part of uh, putting on a good experience for them is, is making sure it is a first class experience. I mean, 100 hours is a huge investment, and I know we've done lots of videos about just sort of the the dealers that PokerStars provides. I think everyone can agree that these are the best dealers in the world. So, I mean, hats off, that's incredible. And something else that I've noticed about this event specifically is that you guys really worked hard on the schedule to make sure that all players were offered a lot of opportunities and a lot of options to play things and see if they could run deep. So what does it take to build these kind of schedules? Building the schedule is the easy part, executing it is the, the challenge. Um, yeah, over, over 50 events, we wanted to make sure that there's something for everyone here at, uh, at every game, at every price point. So uh, in doing that, the, the logistics behind the, the staffing of that, it's, it's a real challenge and it's a, uh, it's a testament to my team how smoothly it's gone. I'm, I'm sure that uh, uh, you guys will agree that uh, the event has gone very smooth and the feedback that I've received from the, the players has been uh, outstanding. So uh, a real testament to my team, but it, it, is a, it is a real challenge, as you say. <laughs> 
I, I've been completely blown away. Now, of course, we're here now and enjoying the facilities now, but what do you see now, I guess, as the future? What do you expect? What, what can we hope for? What's coming in the next year, two years? Uh, more of the same, more growth, uh, more uh, uh, players Curtis, discovering Macau for the first please, time and uh, uh, the amount of times I've heard over this uh, this week, uh, why haven't I been here before, you know, why is uh, this the first time I've been to Macau, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an amazing destination and it, it offers something to poker players that uh, I think nowhere else in the world does and that is a new market, a, a growing verging market where they can uh, come and play with people from all backgrounds and, and all different skill levels, so I, I see uh, this growth trend continuing and I see the uh, the more that people discover that from, from uh, other regions, the, the more that will happen. And I think a good example of that is uh, our main event participation oh, by country please. list. We had uh, uh, over 150% uh, growth from markets such as Australia, the US, uh, Russia, uh, the UK um, for this event, which is, uh, which is really good. In terms of making this a strong international event, coupled with our, our local market, I think we've uh, definitely succeeded in that. I, for one, am happy to keep coming back year after year. You can count on seeing me here, that's for sure, eating the tarts. Thank you guys so much. Of course, you can follow all the coverage with us right here as we crown a champion in a lot of events on PokerNews.com.